Hey guys, Michael Bush out again. Um, welcome back. I um, wanted to thank everybody for the response that we got on the videos, uh, idea that I had about teaching people how to fish swim baits. Um, we had almost 600 views on that video on YouTube, so thank you very much. And those of you that haven't to subscribed to it, please do. Um, so, uh, like I said in the last video, we're going to try to shorten that learning curve, try to teach people who are all not only in swim baits already, but those that are thinking about getting into swim baits. So, Stay tuned on this, and we're going to go, we're going to try to walk you through in a series of videos. Um, I wrote out a rough outline, and it looks like we might take a couple of videos to cover everything um, before we get into the uh, equipment aspect of it. So I want your mind to be in the right place um, before we get into the equipment part of it, so that you know what you're getting into. Um, but like I said in the last video, we need to, before we even talk about the equipment, the rods, reels, lines, knots, and that kind of stuff, we need to talk a little bit about why the swim baits work. Why do I fish swim baits? What makes them tick? Um, and even before we do that, we need to talk a little bit about, we need to actually define what a swim bait is. Um, for the purpose of this video, um, I'm gonna define a swim bait as a hard or soft swim bait, bait that is six inches or longer. Um, now, if you've been doing this a little while, usually your standard might be a little higher than that. But for the purpose of this video, keep it to the, to the, to the uh, people that are just getting into the swim baits. We're going to stick with swim, uh, six inches. That doesn't mean you can't catch big fish on five inch swim baits. But just for the purpose of this, we're going to call six inches and higher a swim bait. Um, yeah, I just find that the, the, uh, the smaller baits don't have the drawing power. You have more drawing power on the bait as you get higher, longer in size. So let's stick with six for now. Um, so let's get started. Why do I fish swim baits? Um, I had to ask myself that question. It was a very hard question to ask, but uh, like most people, I want to catch big bass and more of them. I mean, that's just pretty both simple. And another thing I ask with swim baits is every single time that I'm on the water, I am fishing for my personal best. I want to catch the biggest bass in the lake. <clears throat> That is the number one reason why I'm out there. I just, I'm not a tournament angler. No, have no ambitions to be in tournament, but I want to, I want to be a trophy big bass fisherman. I want to catch the biggest bass in the lake. Um, and that's how I do. And the reason I'm as successful as I am is I fish for them, point blank. Um, so the third reason is why I fish with baits is I want to learn more about bigger bass so I can catch my personal bass and so I can catch more big bass. So um, <clears throat> you've heard me say <clears throat> over the years, you will learn more in one year of fishing for big bass with big swim baits than you will in five years fishing conventional style baits. And let me explain why I think that. The simple reason is you'll have more data because you're fishing for those larger fish exclusively. Um, not only will you catch more bigger fish, but you will also see more bigger fish in the terms of followers. So when you have that extra data, you gain that extra confidence in that, in that bait and, and the technique um, so that you can apply that to your pattern and you can apply it. And then when you apply that to the pattern, you'll catch even more bigger bass. So more data and learning how to catch bigger fish um, definitely ties into the rest of the reason why I fish swim baits. So um, next topic we have is, is why do they work? Um, Usually big swim baits um, tend to swim and look more realistic than conventional style baits. You're keying in on fours that the bass already feed on. You know, you're talking shad, bluegill, yellow perch, crappie, trout. All those things are, are things that the swim bait guys are trying to uh, imitate um, because that's what the big bass feed on, you know. That doesn't look like a spinner bait. It doesn't look like a jig. You know, it, it tends in on more the more realism part of it. Um, and I feel like that is an important part of why they work. Um, the second reason they work is because they have more calling power. <clears throat> and you'll, you, maybe some of you have heard me say that they expand the strike zone of the big bias. Now, let me explain a little bit about the, uh, a doc story that I can um, uh, relate to you so you can understand what I mean by expanding the strike zone. <clears throat> I was fishing a lake in North Georgia and the dock that I was fishing was 25 feet from left to right. Um, so what I did is I threw my swim bait on the left-hand side of the dock. And as I cleared the dock on my swim bait, out of the corner of my eye, I could see this 8.67 pound bass. Ask me how I know the weight. 
coming with authority, moving quick, coming right towards me. She was about six inches under the water. She was throwing a wake. I could see her clear as day. And she was coming at me quick. I slowed down a little bit, and she crushed my bait right there at the boat. So that fish saw my bait 25 feet away. And that's what I mean by expanding the strike zone. Big bass do dumb things when it comes to bigger baits. And I have a theory on why that happens. Um, I feel like big bass are efficient feeders. And what I mean by that is they would rather eat one big meal than several smaller meals. Um, and that's why I think that they do that. They would rather not, they would rather be efficient eat the big meal versus chasing those smaller baits because of their size. They just want, they're not school kids, they're adults. They are very efficient, they're very methodical, they're opportunistic feeders, and they want to make sure that they, it, you know, it, they just don't want to chase bend all their day eating. They want to sit and just take one big bite and then go back and sit. Um, that is just my theory um, based on everything that I've learned from swim baits that I've seen in the, in the, in the field um, on the water and applied to this. It's not carved in stone, but I know that if you ask a lot of the uh, experienced swim bait guys out there, you'll see that this expanded strike zone is very, very common. You can see them calling fish from longer distances. You just don't see that with very often with spinner baits, top waters, and all that kind of stuff, um, calling fish from that, that long of a distance. Um, the fourth and final reason why I feel like swim baits work is I don't feel like swim baits have hit mainstream yet. Now, let's not count California. That's a different ballgame. But I'm talking about Mississippi River and East. Everybody has a box of crankbaits, a box of topwater, two boxes of jerk baits, drop shot, four bags, four boxes of plastic. But not many of them have boxes of swim bait that use them as a tools you know um, for whatever reason that may be you know a lot of them what they do is they might have one or two they throw it a couple of times and they don't get bit on it um, and then you'll see them up on the swap or sell board a couple a couple of days later you have to spend the time to learn each technique it's just like any other technique out there you have to put the time in on it it's not going a lot of times it comes in one day a lot of times it comes in two weeks a lot of times it comes in a month it uh, depends on where you live and how you fish them, when you're fishing them. You know, there are times to throw them and times not to throw them. And time, you know, they're, they're tools, you know. There's a certain time and place for each tool to use, and swim baits are no different. Um, so that is the, the main thing is, you know, you don't see a lot of people with six, seven, eight-inch swim baits here in the south like you do out west. So that brings me to my simple point. Bass aren't conditioned to swim baits, bigger baits like they are with conven conventional baits. And that will conclude this video on that point, but my next video, I'm gonna prove that point the best way that I can. I'm gonna interview some of the guys that I got into swim bait fishing and ask them what their success rate was on big fish prior to getting swim baits, and then what their success rate was after they got into swim baits on the same body of water. Nothing's changed other than that they're throwing swim baits on the same body of water that they grew up on, and a lot of times what they grew up on. Um, so also I'm going to talk a little bit about how I got into swim baits. Hopefully you'll be able to relate to my story um, of how I got into them and what caused me to start swim, swim bait fishing a little bit. And you know, maybe it, you'll be able to relate to it and uh, see how it applies to your situation. I'm no different than you are, you know. I don't live on big, ba big bait, um, big bass mecca. I'm just here in Georgia. I don't live in Florida. I don't live in Texas. I don't live in Alabama. I don't live in a big bass state. Um, so I'm able to apply this to techniques on very pressured waters and, 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 and hopefully you'll be able to learn from it, from what I learned um, as I was getting into it. We'll also talk a little bit about the roadblocks that a lot of anglers get into um, when they start swim bait fishing. So tune in on the next video. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page so you get those email notifications. I appreciate it and thank you for your time.